On the agenda tonight, we're going to be doing a vocal analysis of Emma Watson performing Belle from the movie Beauty and the Beast, released in 2017, and comparing it with the original performed by Paige O'Hara for the animated release back in 1991. Hello, Phil here from Wings of Pegasus, and welcome to another analysis video. If you enjoy this video, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe. So, this request came in from somebody stating that they didn't quite connect in the same way to the recent release of Beauty and the Beast that they did when it was released back in 1991 and they asked me whether it was because of autotune and whether I could compare the vocals or have a little look at Emma Watson's vocal in a bit more depth and detail. So that's exactly what we're going to do tonight. So just to let you in on what I've done for tonight's video, I've taken the original audio from 1991, the performance by Paige O'Hara, and I've isolated her vocal track so we get a nice clear representation. And I've done the same for Emma Watson for the 2017 performance. So we'll look at both of those isolated vocals in the pitch monitoring software and we'll see if we can notice any differences or similarities. If you've been watching the videos over the last couple of weeks, you'll have an advantage as to seeing where autotune comes in as and when it does. We'll start with Emma Watson and get her waveforms up on screen. Her voice is going to be the yellow line and it's going to come in from the right hand side of the screen. So as soon as you hear any voice, you'll see that line starting on the right hand side and you've got the notes on the left hand side. But let's jump into it. I will be stopping it so that we can compare. Let's have a listen to Emma Watson. Little town, it's a quiet village Every day, like the one before Little town, full of little people Waking up to say There we go. So, you can already see on your screens We've got some serious snapping to notes going on here. So this is auto-tune, by the way. I'm sure you guys spotted that. And we're directly on the line, directly on the line, directly on the line, uh, directly on the line. And that's going to be a common theme with Emma's vocal because it has been really heavily auto-tuned and or pitch corrected. It might have just been the case that because they've been recording this in the studio, it is pitch correction rather than auto-tune. So they've manually shifted her voice to exactly on the note and when there isn't a great deal of vibrato in there because Emma doesn't seem to have a trained voice the vibrato is really subtle so it means that it's not going to be really far either side of the lines when you've got someone who's more classically trained the vibrato tends to be wider and it can go from anywhere from a semitone to a tone to a tone and a half across these lines where you'll see them suddenly bouncing up and down because of the vibrato of the more classically trained singer. Just for reference, this isn't going to be a video knocking Emma Watson's vocal ability. As a Harry Potter fan myself, Emma can do no wrong. I think the buck really stops with the casting and the fact that they've chosen Emma for this role and haven't chosen somebody that is trained singing wise and it's very much a movie that you would consider more musical theatre because it is a musical than just hiring an actor who's just going to play a straight part. There are vocals in this particular movie so if you're thinking about casting somebody they should have a background in musical theatre, as was the case very much in that original release. I guess it is similar to saying to the people who were the animators who were drawing back in the day in 1991, all of the characters saying to them, OK, you've drawn the characters, so now you're going to sing as well. And they'll say, well, no, I'm not a singer. I just draw the characters. I'm an animator. That's what I do. I don't sing as well. It's exactly the same with actors. And there seems to be this tendency to want to get the actors to sing on the movie if it's a musical even when they don't sing and 
they use auto-tune to get their voices to the right places and it just sounds totally unnatural and the thing about this movie and these songs is that it needs that expression that's in the voice and auto-tune takes that out of the voice she's an actor she's gone for an audition she's got the part which is great and they've decided to use her voice rather than get in another singer to then perform on her behalf who maybe has a similar sound in her voice that Emma does in her speaking voice there are thousands if not hundreds of thousands of great singers on Broadway and in the West End who would have been able to do this but the film company and the studios decided to auto-tune Emma's voice which maybe wasn't the best idea in hindsight but because they wanted to use her voice on it they were left with no option. So now let's compare the 2017 vocal to the 1991 vocal. We'll listen to Emma again just to have a little bit of a refresher. Little town, it's a quiet village Every day, like the one before And you can hear that Emma has got a vibrato to her voice but it's when she sings straight that the auto-tune is most evident because it's just snapping it exactly to the notes and let's get rid of that one and now we're loading up the 1991 performance by Paige O'Hara Little town, it's a quiet village Every day, like the one before Little town, full of little people Waking up to say. Immediately, you can hear the difference between the mechanical sound of Emma's voice and the natural sound across the microphone, totally unfiltered. <laughs> having that expression in the voice and look at the vibrato like I said in musical theatre you're starting to get really close to classically trained singers and a lot of them are actually classically trained but now with musical theatre it's slightly less dramatic than going full on classical but have a look at these waveforms and the vibrato how wide it is and I mentioned about you can have a semitones vibrato or a tones and you can see here we've almost got that full tones worth of vibrato going on and if I just take it back to Emma's lines here you can see the vibrato is so minimal and let's bring back the waveforms so it's a world of difference and in the vibrato is the expression as well. It's the personality of the voice. I've mentioned this about guitar players when we've analysed guitar and got the guitar out and looked at vibrato as a technique. That puts the player's personality in their playing. It's exactly the same for vibrato in the voice. It's putting that personal stamp on your sound. So when you've got these comparisons here it shows you how different they are. Let me just take it back and this is Paige's vocal in 1991. You can hear as well, I'm just going to play it again. Listen to the dynamic expression in the voice, the way that there's so much breath in the sound. Little town, it's a quiet village Every day, like the one before Little town, full of little people It's that air in the sound going Little town, town, town Rather than going little town And having an auto-tune note that just sounds really abrupt And this is the subtlety of trained singers versus non-trained singers Having that subtlety in the voice of going Little town And having the breath in there or going little town and using the voice that you would use to talk in so my talking voice here I'm not speaking like this I'm not putting dynamics into my talking because that's not how you talk whereas when you start to sing when you're putting emotion in there little town you start to balance your breath because now you are singing you're putting across an emotion you're not just staying saying something matter of fact if I was just going Little town, little town, I'm just talking, little town, if I'm singing, little town, it's a quiet village, and even there, 
you can maybe hear how I'm going into head voice. Mm, it's a quiet village. And balancing air with head voice, there's so much you do vocally to change the sound of what you're singing rather than what you're talking. When you talk, you don't do all of these things. You can hear that I'm just talking in my chest voice. Even though you don't think about it when you're talking, you naturally talk in chest voice. So even if I was starting to go all the way up here and being a little bit more expressive, I'm still not going a little bit more expressive. <laughs> I'm not changing into my head voice when I'm talking. So this is the point that so much is done vocally by a trained singer and a great singer that you don't notice, you just appreciate the vocal, but when you compare it to somebody who's using their talking voice to try and sing, and it's auto-tuned, it's obviously going to stand out like a sore thumb. So let's have a listen to the next section, and we'll start with Emma again. There goes the baker with his tray, like always, the same old bread and rolls to sell. Listen how that's all at one level dynamically. Emma's just talking through these vocal phrases. There is a little bit of breath that comes in next, I think. Every morning, just the same. Just the same. It's got some air in there, but not within the vocal line. Since the morning that we came to this poor provincial town. Good morning, Belle. Let's have a little comparison with the original by Paige. There goes the baker with his tray, like always, the same old bread and rolls to sell. Listen to the way on that G4, she goes into head voice, just gives it a slightly different sound. The tone change is just where the emotion happens and where the expression happens, rather than connecting the vocal cords as solidly as she was. There's so much subtle expression in a great singer's voice. This also brings up the point. When you're listening to a fantastic singer, as Paige is with this original performance, and then you're taking somebody who doesn't have the same training, why are they snapping the person's notes who isn't as well trained to be more accurate than the person that's a, an amazing singer? <laughs> You've got to think, well, where's the thought process in that? Surely you should be trying to snap the notes to where the great singer's snapping them to. For example, just on the screen here, you can see how the waveforms are, you know, flat and around the note here, flat of the note. Here, we've got vibrato that is... If we're putting a line through the middle of the vibrato, we would be flat of the note. So they're not dead on the whole time. You can see another little part here, flat of the note. So if anything, you should be trying to get the person who isn't trained to sound like the person who is trained, not get it to be more accurate than the person who's been singing their whole lives and is classically trained. So even from that standpoint, it doesn't make sense. But again, the producers in the studio are looking at these lines at 440 hertz, and they think that on the line is the best. So we'll do that. It doesn't work that way with music, but let's just listen to the rest of this again. Every morning, just the same, oh, since the morning that we came. Again, listen, listen to, not only to how good the voice sounds, but look at the fact that we are flat with those notes. It's a wide vibrato. Again, we've almost got a tone's worth of vibrato on a really short vocal phrase. So we're never really on a note. And that's the point that auto-tune is just hanging these on the notes. Whereas with a great singer, they don't spend a lot of time just singing straight notes. So hopefully you guys can hear the difference in the vocal tone that's being produced, but also the subtlety. It's something that is difficult to point out because great singers do it so that it's almost unnoticeable to the ear. You just feel the emotion. You don't hear the voice. So that's why it's so difficult to point out where that dynamic change is happening. But to people that do sing and have studied singing, you can hear the little flips into different percentages of registers. That's the other thing that great singers won't just use full on head voice. They won't use 
full-on chest voice, they'll have a mix. They'll use their mixed voice between these registers and sometimes they'll go full head, they'll have a mix, they'll go full chest. The crowd vocals that we get in the 2017 release, they haven't been auto-tuned. So this is why it stands out even more on Emma's lead vocal. It's a lead vocal. It's taking your attention on the center of the stage if they were performing. So when you hear an auto-tuned voice and then you hear natural voices, it's really going to exaggerate that fact that it's auto-tuned. Listen to these backing vocals. Never part of any crowd, cause her head's up on some clout. No denying she's a funny girl that bell. Listen to how natural that final phrase is. We are well flat of the A sharp three that's being aimed for by this group of kids that are singing the vocal, but it hasn't been auto-tuned. The producers have allowed that to be flat because it's just kids and they want it to sound, ironically, they want it to sound natural like kids singing. So they haven't auto-tuned it. So you could argue, well, why wouldn't you want to get a natural sound of a woman singing the lead part? So it just makes it stand out more, like I said, because of the fact that this is all natural, but then Emma's voice will come in auto-tuned. You might have to brace yourselves for this next part because the auto-tune, when you listen to it kick in on Emma's voice, it registers a tone lower than it should have done. So you hear this, ha, 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 ha. There's a little flip before the vocal starts. Have a listen. And you can see on the monitoring software here, just a straight line. But did you hear the, Ha, ha, ha. That little flip right at the beginning. Listen out for it again. That's the auto tune not accepting the ha, the little slide up that might have happened in the studio. It's snapping notes. So that's unfortunately another. Hallmark of auto-tune is just doing what it's been programmed to do. There's no subtlety in it. Oh, isn't this amazing? It's my favorite part because you'll see. As we've had with previous auto-tune analysis videos, you'll start to see these little castle formations of just having straight lines. And we've had that, I can't remember which video it was in, but we had a nice arrangement of a castle with a little lookout at the back as well. But when you look at a trained vocalist, you're not gonna get that. Let's get Paige up on screen here and... Interestingly, we've had a bit of a key change and an alteration to the original composition so that it's lower in Emma's range. So it was obviously easier for her to sing in that range. But here with the trained vocalist, she can take her voice a lot higher and keep the control. Isn't this amazing? And this is the kind of thing that autotune won't like. The isn't this amazing? That kind of ah, little slide down. And again, <laughs> I shouldn't be singing C5s and C-sharp 5s because uh, I'm a guy. But just to give you the idea of that little ah, that little decline and it sounds so cool descending vocally because it's natural. You can do that, Paige can do that, but through auto-tune she wouldn't be able to do that because the software wouldn't allow her to f just have that decline. It will want to go, ah! it will want to go through all of those semitones. But anyway, have a look at how accurate she is on this entry to the phrase and then goes a little bit flat with the vibrato, a little bit sharp, but again, wide vibrato here and descending really nice and straight down to the G4. Great vocal here. Accuracy pitch wise is spot on, at least spot on to the ear. It's just perfect. It's my favorite part because you'll see 
Great example there of vocal technique holding a note. I know that we start sharp, we're bang on, and then we're slightly flat, but I mean, this is for all intents and purposes, bang on from a vocal perspective because you never get straight on the line. And then we've got the vibrato that kicks in and we ascend with vibrato through the note, but you don't notice it. I'm gonna take it back so that we can appreciate that vocal phrase again here. Technically, we're between notes here, we're flat, and then we're pretty much bang on a little bit of a descending vibrato through the D4, but it just sounds great. Let's have another little listen. Favorite part because you see. Here's where she meets Prince Charming. Again, listen to the release into head voice for this D5. And again, you can say that we are sharp of the note here. The D sharp five, we're touching on that with a little bit of vibrato, but we're not on the D5. Autotune would have taken this note and flattened it to the line. But she won't discover that it's him till chapter three. And there we have it. But let's have a little listen on further. But behind that fair facade, I'm afraid she's rather odd. Very. <laughs> and listen to odd, how out of tune it sounds, but it's because of the expression and the meaning of the words that they're singing. It will change the pitch because we naturally attribute different pitches to different words and different emotions. If I was trying to say something and I was suddenly getting a bit excitable, hear, to w hear where my voice went there. I went up in pitch, not because I'm thinking, oh, because I'm saying something that needs to be more excitable, I have to hit um, a G4 and then I'll try and get up to the A4 and maybe even a B4 or a C5. You're not thinking about that when you talk. You naturally go up in pitch if you're getting more excitable. Exactly the same with musical theater. They apply their vocal techniques for the expression of the emotion of what they're singing and the lyrical content. So let's take it back to odd. Listen out to odd. Because odd is the kind of word that when you're trying to make it stand out in a sentence because the person is odd that you're trying to describe, then you do this with your voice. Have a listen to it. But behind that fair facade, I'm afraid she's rather odd. Listen to that. It's like, um, I'm afraid she's rather odd. <laughs> it's like they forget about vocal training for that particular word because they want it to stand out. And that's where autotune doesn't work because it won't let you do that. I just want to mention as well that Luke Evans, who plays Gaston, I believe, in the 2017 release, obviously has a trained voice. He's got some form of classical training and he's probably done a bit of musical theater in his acting career. I don't know this for a fact, but I am just speculating because of the sound of his voice. You can tell a trained voice a mile off. He's got breath support, he's got vibrato, he's got control, he's got expression in his voice, and he's using his voice dynamically to express the lyrical content of the composition. And have a listen to this. Right from the moment when I met her, saw her, I said she's gorgeous and I fell. Listen to the way that Luke is using his voice for expression with what he's saying. So when he's saying about her being gorgeous, he says, um, I think it was something like, I said she's gorgeous. And he went, hi, and he's putting in lots of air. I said she's gorgeous. Almost like there aren't any notes in there. Let me take that back so you can hear it. I said she's gorgeous. There you go. I said she's gorgeous. <laughs> it's almost not worrying about notes because of the expression of the line. And that's what singers do. And I fell. And I fell. And then he connects his vocal cords after that expression. So we've got that. I said she's gorgeous and I fell. So he's very much dipping into tuning when he wants to, to put across the meaning of the words that he's saying, that lyrical content, like I said. But you can tell this voice when he goes, fell, that vibrato, he's leaning into that chest voice. He's got vocal technique. He's got classical technique in there. He is trained. 
Here in town, there's only she who is beautiful as me. Again, listen to beautiful. He's going away from tuning and worrying about notes. So I'm making plans to woo and marry Belle. And again, depth of tone. Belle. When he goes down, I'm not a classical singer. I haven't been classically trained. But when he gets down into his chest voice, you can hear the resonance in there. And it sounds like Luke is a baritone, maybe low barry in terms of his range because of the resonance we get on that C3. Okay, let's have a listen to this. And it looks like because his voice is so deep and rich in tone, and there are obviously some harmonics within the voice that the pitch monitoring software is picking up as a D sharp seven. <laughs> and this is definitely not around the D7 range. It's going to be probably, yeah, D3. So it's got it a little bit wrong, but listen to it. Don't take any notice, really, of the pitch monitoring software here because it is struggling. The moment when I met her, saw her, I said she's gorgeous and I fell. Here in town there's only she who is beautiful as me. So I'm making plans to woo and marry Belle. Listen to the richness of that tone. Again, great vocal, all of the support, and the way that he's being a little bit more strict with his notes, but you still get that expression in there. And just to finish with, we're going to have a listen to the final phrase of the song. It's very short, but the good thing is that we get to hear Luke's voice and Emma's voice together on the 2017 release and also Paige's voice with Richard's voice from the 1991 release. So we get a direct comparison between the two singers, male and female. But let's have a listen to the 1991 version first. There must be more than this provincial life. Just what I'm going to make Belle my wife. And there we have it. Uh, that vibrato coming in from Richard. Let me see if I can actually extend this because I want to see how wide this vibrato goes. There must be more than this provincial life. Just let me take it to the. My wife. And she goes a good straight. Okay, if we let it play on, we can see that we've got almost a tone and a half worth of vibrato from Richard. A tone and a half worth of vibrato, which is really wide. Let's have a listen to that again. Listen to this vibrato. Just this is more classical now with the width. In terms of looking at these waveforms, the width of the lines, listen to this. My wife. And she goes a good strange but special. Oh. And there we have it. So it's something that again you can't do that with auto-tune cover a tone and a half because there's three notes in there that the auto-tune will want to try and snap it to. So it just wouldn't work. Let's now have a listen to the 2017 release. There must be more than this provincial life Just watch, I'm going to make Belle my wife And let me just extend that so we can keep it on screen Yeah, so here we can see that Emma's voice is still heavily auto-tuned being snapped to these lines you can probably hear it now Whenever you're listening to a natural voice for any length of time and then you flip to auto-tune it just becomes really obvious just watch, I'm going to make Belle my wife. And look at the way that Luke's voice hasn't been as edited. We start off a bit flat and then we're between notes, we're then sharp, and he's allowed to ascend through the D4 with his voice. So he hasn't been as strictly tuned as Emma has. And it's because of that classical training, they're allowing his voice to just shine because he's got a great voice. He is trained. This is why when you look back in the day at The Sound of Music, you had somebody like Julie Andrews who could perform on stage and screen because she was classically trained. She had the voice to do it as well as having the ability to act. That's why she was hired for that film role and that's why she performed on stage because people that went to see her uh, treading the boards and actually performing in musical theatre 
wouldn't complain about her voice because she's had the training. So that's the way that I look at these kind of performances in movies that were very much based in musical theatre that were animated. Would you be happy having somebody performing that night after night, maybe two shows a day, using autotune? I don't think it would wash. Let me know if you think they should hire singers who have been training for multiple years, usually their whole life, in order to play these parts that are very much musical theatre in nature when it comes to the vocal production and the vocal ability that is required to really sell that performance. Anyway, thank you guys for watching this video. I hope you did enjoy it. If you did, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe. Keep those requests coming in the comments section below. But I will see you guys at the next one. Rock!